So you may have seen uh, this week that Oprah was back on primetime television. She hosted a special on Monday called Shame, Blame, and the Weight Loss Revolution. And really, it was more of an infomercial for drugs like Ozempic, which millions of Americans are taking to lose weight. Now, previously, I've gone into the various side effects of these drugs. Ozempic, for example, can potentially cause thyroid tumors, cancer, projectile vomiting. Uh, maybe even more alarming is the fact that we also don't really understand how these drugs work. Ozempic essentially tricks the pancreas into releasing more insulin, and in turn, Ozempic's artificially created hormones, quote, appear to actually bind to receptors on neurons in several parts of the brain, according to a biologist quoted last year by The Atlantic. Now, what do these hormones do when they bind to receptors in the brain? Apparently, they reduce people's urge to uh, not simply reduce the urge to, to eat, but also to shop. Uh, to engage in a range of other compulsive behaviors. And if that's true, no scientist in the world has any idea exactly why it's happening or what other modifications this drug might be making to the brain. As if to prove that point, as recently as this month, The Atlantic published a follow-up piece entitled, The Science Behind Ozempic Was Wrong. Now, it all sounds very much like uh, an elixir, a wonderful drug, that uh, a wonder drug that can magically solve all of your problems. But if you're the cynical type, or if you just paid any attention at all to Big Pharma over the past few years, you might have some questions. And these are the questions that Oprah's infomercial on Monday was intended to address. And to be fair, some of the side effects, side effects did come up. One woman in the special said that she had to stop taking one of these weight loss drugs due to nausea symptoms, for example. But by and large, this was a puff piece that centered on a lie. It's a lie that Oprah repeated several times and that every television medical expert in this country repeats as well. It's the claim that obesity is a disease rather than a symptom of poor life choices. Watch. Number one thing I hope people come away with is knowing that it's a disease and it's in the brain. So when I tell you how many times I have blamed myself because yeah. you think I'm smart enough to figure this out yeah. and then to hear all along, it's you fighting your brain. For CBS Mornings, I'm Jamie Yukis. For more on what we just saw, let's bring in our Dr. John LaPou. Good morning. How are you doing? Good morning. How's it going, Nate? I'm um, good. So um, why does uh, medication help more so than people asking, just change your lifestyle? Just change your lifestyle, right? Well, this is a chronic disease. You go to the CDC website and to all these experts. I interviewed Dr. Amanda Velasco, who was on ah. this night, for about an hour and a half. Um, she was terrific. And they, everybody will tell you the same thing, which is, this is not something that you can just say, oh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to snap out of it. Would you ever go up to somebody who has asthma or diabetes and say, snap out of it? Mm. Well, you can't snap out of obesity. So Oprah uses this idea that obesity is a disease to justify treating it with drugs instead of diet and exercise. This is an idea that if you listen to medical experts is something you're not supposed to question. As you just heard from that CBS doctor, it's a chronic disease. Go to the CDC website. Everybody will tell you the same thing. It's just like asthma or diabetes. Then everybody at the desk just sort of nods along with it. Except that obesity is nothing like asthma or diabetes, actually. People with obesity can cure themselves. Actually, you can. That's true in literally every case of obesity that's ever existed. Like, you could lock somebody in a room and feed them 1,000 calories of fruit every day, and they will be cured of obesity with 100% certainty. All you have to do is eat a healthy diet and you're cured. Every single person who has eaten a healthy diet and has exercised has been cured of obesity. Every single one. You cannot say the same for everybody with asthma or diabetes, at least not type 1 diabetes. And, you know, if obesity is a disease, you also need to explain why almost nobody in the country had this disease in the 1930s. Why is that? Like, why can you look at, a, at, at footage of, uh, you know, from any uh, street corner in any major city in the 1930s and see people walking along? No fat people. None. So apparently this disease didn't exist back then. That's interesting, isn't it? Why doesn't anybody in Ethiopia have this disease today? So there seems to be a very curious correlation here. The, the disease of obesity only takes hold in places where people eat a lot of food and don't get a lot of exercise. And, and in each individual case, if you have someone who's obese, what you're going to find is they eat a lot of food and they don't get a lot of exercise. Every single time. 
You know, they say that correlation isn't causation, but I think in this case, the causation is pretty clear. And this is such an obvious, self-evident point that, you know, made me wonder, when exactly did medical experts suddenly decide that obesity is a disease, and why did they decide that? What definition were they using exactly? Well, it turns out that the esteemed medical journal, The Lancet, has already answered this question. Back in 2013, the American Medical Association simply decided to arbitrarily classify obesity as a disease, even though they admitted that it didn't meet the scientific definition of a disease. Quoting from The Lancet, quote, A disease, by definition, needs to have characteristic symptoms and signs. And even though excess body fat is a characteristic sign, there are no symptoms that are unique to obesity. The American Medical Association applied a different approach to this conundrum in 2013. Instead of trying to determine whether obesity fits specific definitions of a disease, the AMA used a uh, utilitarian approach to determine whether the recognition of obesity as a disease would have a positive impact on the individual patient, the healthcare system, and the wider society. So did you get that? In other words, they realized that obesity is not a disease. It does not meet the definition because there are no unique symptoms that only obese people suffer from. But they just decided to call it a disease anyway in order to raise awareness, otherwise known as to sell more medication. And that's what one of the top medical journals in the world is admitting. And, and by the way, it wasn't just the AMA that took this approach. The Lancet continues, quote, In the UK, the Royal College of Physicians recognized obesity as a disease in 2019. The main argument of RSP, RCP and those in favor of this recognition is that unless obesity is defined as a disease, the funding for effective treatment options will be inadequate to stop its increasing prevalence and the health and socioeconomic costs associated with it. I mean, this is almost too absurd to be real, but, but it is real. Leading medical associations all over the world decided to lie about obesity being a disease, and they admitted it out loud. And everybody just went along with it. And now you've got people like this on, on uh, CBS that, that quote the AMA. So I, uh, you know, I, they're, they're, they're the ones who say it's a, a, a disease. Except they said it's not a disease, but they're going to call it one anyway. $20 barely gets you anything these days. You can't get a burger and fries for less than that. But do you know what 20 bucks will get you from the cell phone company I use, Pure Talk? You can get unlimited talk, text, and plenty of 5G data for just 20 bucks a month. Pure Talk gives you the same quality of service as your current cell phone provider, but for half the cost. The average family saves almost $1,000 a year, all with no contracts and no activation fees. You can switch to Pure Talk and Keep the phone and phone number you currently use, or you can take advantage of their great deals on the latest iPhones and Androids. Making the switch is incredibly easy. Their U.S. customer service team can help you join Pure Talk in as little as 10 minutes. Choose to spend your hard-earned money with a wireless company that shares your values, supports our military and, and veterans, creates American jobs, and refuses to advertise on fake news networks. Stop spending ridiculous amounts on your phone plan. Go to puretalk.com slash Walsh. Right now, my listeners can get an additional 50% off their first month. That's puretalk.com slash Walsh. And we're still seeing this today, of course, with uh, nonsense like long COVID. And in fact, there are many examples, many of the so-called mental illnesses that we talk about a lot on this show. Uh, the show. The same sort of bargain has been made where they say, well, you know, it doesn't really fit the definition of a disease, but it's helpful to call it one. And so we will. The only difference is that with obesity, they've just come out and told us that they were going to lie about it, and nobody saw a problem with it. So take, for example, this remarkable clip from 2013, which is the year the AMA decided to just invent the idea that obesity is a disease. Watch as Charlie Rose asks the medical expert about this, and you can tell that Charlie Rose is a little confused as to why the AMA has suddenly decided to uh, make this decision out of nowhere. What science has changed all of a sudden, Rose wants to know. That explains why the AMA abruptly decided to label obesity as a disease. And I want you to watch how this in-house medical expert responds. Watch. Well, we know as obesity researchers that obesity is a disease, but the fact that the American Medical Association has recognized it will have tremendous impact on legislation in Washington, with insurance companies. It carries a lot of weight. One in three American adults uh, has obesity, overweight. Do you think this will cause insurers 
to pay for some of the treatments for obesity. I think so. If you look at insurance policies, they generally exclude obesity treatment. So mm -hmm. people come in, they think they should be treated because they have health problems like diabetes, high blood pressure, even cancers are caused by obesity, and yet that treatment is excluded. Mm -hmm. Within the medical community, there's been a clear understanding that obesity is a disease. That's right. Or not. It, it's become very clear in the past few years that as people gain weight, damage occurs to the signaling pathways between the fat cell, the stomach, the intestine, and the brain. Mm -hmm. The brain can't tell how much food is coming in and how much fat is stored. Then why has it taken so long? Because it takes a while before these types of research findings are translated into the, a group like the AMA recognizing this. But the fact that this was overwhelmingly recognized by the AMA, I think, says volumes it's about a, it's this. It's a premature. So it's just one non-answer and non-sequitur after another. It's a disease because it hurts your body, exclaims the TV doctor. But that's not what a disease is. Okay, shooting yourself in the foot would hurt your body too. That doesn't mean that shooting yourself in the foot is a disease. Drowning yourself in the river will hurt your body, but when they pull your corpse out of the water, they aren't going to say, wow, it looks like he died from the drowning disease. It doesn't make sense. So when Charlie Rose puts some more mild pressure on this guy, he just says, well, the AMA overwhelmingly agrees with me. So shut up and accept the fact that obesity is a disease. Science commands it. You don't get to ask questions. Now, it's not hard to see what's going on here. The point is to medicalize the human condition and remove human agency by turning all vice into an illness. And in the process, Big Pharma makes a lot of money, which is not incidental, by the way. Now, it's less clear why exactly anybody would take uh, Oprah seriously concerning this topic. Back in December, Oprah disclosed that she has been taking a nonspecific weight loss medication herself. More recently, just weeks before this primetime infomercial aired, Oprah stepped aside from her role on the board of Weight Watchers, uh, claiming that it would uh, present a conflict of interest. And in reality, the conflict is so obvious and so significant that it completely undercuts the integrity of Oprah's special, no matter what she does or says. So last year, Weight Watchers purchased a telehealth startup called Sequence that connects customers with doctors who are ready and willing to prescribe Ozempic. So Weight Watchers realized that its model of preaching personal willpower and self-control was going out of style. So in a last ditch effort to save the company, they started selling $99 a month subscriptions to connect their customers with these weight loss drugs. And Oprah was on the board of Weight Watchers during that period. Given that background, it's hard to be impressed with the fact that Oprah left Weight Watchers board right before airing a special that stands to benefit both Weight Watchers and their new partners in Big Pharma. This will be a little bit like Hunter Biden suddenly leaving his extremely well-paying job on the board of a Ukrainian oil company a few days before flying Joe Biden into Kiev on a private jet to fire the attorney general looking into the oil company, just you know, taking one random example. Doesn't, doesn't really look good under any circumstances, is the point. But you know, the possibility that Oprah is a corrupt saleswoman isn't really the story here. Everybody knows that already. The fact that virtually every medical expert in the country has been lying to you about obesity is the story. It is not a disease. They know it's not a disease and they have said so. It's not a chronic disorder that can only uh, be fixed by some miracle drug. The whole idea, that whole idea is a scam. One that the AMA deliberately started more than a decade ago. And they told us that they were starting it. And everything we've heard from the medical community since then including this transparent, cringeworthy Oprah infomercial this week, has been designed to perpetuate that scam, that very uh, uh, profitable scam. They want you to believe that you don't have any agency over your body or your life so they can sell you a supply of drugs that cost $1,000 a month. But don't fall for it. Hey, YouTube, thanks for listening to the show. If you'd like access to my full show with no ads, you should go to dailywire.com and use promo code Walsh to get two months free on all annual plans. See you there.